So I am diamond 1 and in the previous act I was gold 2. As you can see the previous act I was actually stuck on gold 2 for a really long time and this act I was stuck in platinum 2 for a really long time. What does that say you? 2 is my favorite number, what else? But there are some tricks I did so I could level up faster and it worked. And I'm not even that good of a player. I usually come top 3, top 4 in my team, get the necessary kills and that's it. Follow the meta, get a good team of agents like get 2 duelists, 1 controller, 2 sentinel type of agents, it can really help you out. Most of the map it goes like Jet, Reyna or Rays, then 1 controller, KJ and 5th one usually goes around with maps but I usually like to think it should be Sage or Sky. If there is a broken agent or a broken weapon that's in the game which everyone is using and you are not you are already at a huge disadvantage. If there is an overpowered agent currently, if they give like an insane power up to any agent, use it. Because once you have learned the agent, you are unstoppable. You can do whatever you like. Let's take Jet for example. Remember the right click when she could dash, right click, upper dash, everything. Or Sky 3 flashes, it was so OP. Then Breach had 3 flashes a game and the insane damage to clear out areas. So if you keep an eye out for these type of things and try using the agents you can already go above average players. You can read the patch notes as soon as they come in the official website of Valorant and see which agents and guns got a buff or a nerf and adapt to the change. Do your job. The most important thing for you to do when you pick your agent is to do your job properly. If you are a KJ, hold sights. If you are Sova, reveal enemy locations. If you are Raze, get easier entries for your team. Do whatever you can for your team to get easier frags. You don't even have to get 30 kills to make your team win. Just do your job properly and believe in your team. It will definitely go far in the rank you deserve. Hold angles. Don't leave your position till the enemy team starts planting or there's a heavy rush in one side. If you leave your location, there's a high possibility the enemy team player could come in and backstab your entire team in the other side. So it's a much better option to just hold your angles and wait for your teammates call till they say all of them are here or they are planting. Only then you should switch your location and leave an angle you are holding. This is most probably the most important job you have to do as a teammate and that is to peek with your teammates and kill the enemy in front of you. If your teammate is going into a gunfight, go with him. There's a higher possibility to win a 2v1 except a 1v1. Also, if your teammate is stuck in an angle and he needs to rotate from there, give him support, give him cover so he can rotate. The best case scenario is he rotates and you might pick a kill. Super simple takes about 30 minutes per map to learn and makes you instantly 3 times better than you already are. Of course, there are agents which may take you longer to learn as they have more lineups but the more lineup a agent has, the better it becomes. And it will also provide a lot of support for your team if you want to clear out areas, want to play post plant, want to stop a plant, get some recoil damage and much more. So it's better to learn some lineups. I made a tier list on agents on how hard they are to learn to make it simpler for you. The easiest agent to learn are Brimstone, Phoenix, KO. Medium level agents are Viper, Killjoy, Rays. And third and the hardest agent to learn in the map, but if you learn you are a literal god, is Sova. If you learn this, you are going to Radiant without any problem because it's so OP. You can make so many of your own lineups. Aim is probably super important no matter what anyone says. I believe aim is one of the most important aspects of the game. To improve your aim, in Valorant especially, I think crosshair placement is really important. If you keep your aim in head level, you can get away with a lot of bad situation where you couldn't win. So if you have really good aim with really good crosshair placement, I think you can easily get yourself out of really bad situations and then you can win a lot more fights. But how do you improve your crosshair placement? It's actually really simple, it's not really that hard. Just jump into a lot of death matches, keep your focus in head level, use a guardian or something. If you train your crosshair placement in head level, it's a really good chance then when you jump on your rank games, you will keep the crosshair in head level. And there is nothing else you can do about crosshair placement 
and so keep doing this and eventually your aim will be in headshot level try and aim trainer like kovax or aim labs aim labs is of course free so you can do that and i also know that a lot of people say like don't do aim trainers they are a waste of money and time just jump on games it's much better a lot of pros say this as well but i think training your aim isn't that bad you can actually get away with a lot of situation where you might miss your aim and it will just drastically improve your consistency in in game so you don't miss a lot of shots so you can do this the playlist i'm going to say you will cover everything from headshots to moving targets to jumping targets and tracking and etc etc i'll be following kovax so if you're in aim labs then just figure something out it will be probably the same name over there as well so let's start with jumbo tile frenzy it's super simple nothing too complicated it's for your warm-up exercise and also your flick targets do this two times one minute in total then we have one wall six targets do this five times it will make your first shot accuracy much more better than it was previously next we have my micro short speed uh, this is to improve your flick speed and as well as your reflexes it's not that hard it will improve your micro adjustments and do this two times next we have tile frenzy 180 strafing 200 percent tracking do this two times for two minutes it will help you gain control over your mouse so it will be much better during tracking times and switching target times next we have bounce target 180 tracking follows the name and it will help you when your opponent is jumping so it will be easier to target him do this once for one minute next we have tam speed 2 bpes it will help you to hit moving targets going left to right in a straight line and that's pretty much it next we have kata ic long strafes do this once it will help you tracking in medium range then we have close long strafes invisible do this once for one minute it will help you in close combat if you do all these it will take you a total of 15 minutes and it will help your aim drastically remember aim training is like gym if you miss one day you can mess up so be consistent and it will help your aim if you have control over your bullets on where they are going it will drastically help you in getting a lot of more kills then you could already four bullets from vandal can kill a person in body shots but to be safer learn spray control there's a higher chance will kill a guy with body shots than headshots to improve your spray control just go into a practice arena and shoot those drone type of things and then come over to the aim thing and change the distance from 10 20 30 40 and keep aiming at it with accurate shots this is also not that hard just go into the practice arena go over to the wall go left shoot go right shoot while you are pressing a and going left press d to stop and then shoot while you are pressing d and going right side press a to stop shoot okay so you keep doing this for like five minutes for like a week then you will get the hang of it then apply those things in deathmatch and comp and then you'll start getting the hang of it and you'll never forget it so it's like a one week thing and you'll get used to it don't solo queue try to get a party of two to three players who you are familiar with because solo queues are usually really bad because you get terrible teammate or really toxic teammates and that's not good if you duo queue or trio queue you will know how your teammates play and you can play off that and also it's more fun if you play with friends who likes to play with randoms if they are toxic I like get queued into so many games with toxic teammates but I queue anyways because I have no friends. If you are a sentinel or a controller type of player and the random teammates install lock a duelist like Reyna or Jet and they are absolutely garbage doesn't get you entries then you are screwed because without getting good entries from duelist there is basically nothing a controller and a sentinel type of player can do. Of course you can reveal locations if you are Sova, block of sights if you are Astra or Omen but that's basically the limit of it. Your duelist type of characters are heavily dependent on getting entries and without them you are basically screwed in the attack round. Be confident, it's just like the girls. If you're confident and ask a girl out, there's a 90% chance the girl will say yes and that goes the same thing with Valorant. 
if you're confident and aim for the head there's a 90% chance we'll get the kill over here as well but if you keep peeking and keep dying like two three times then maybe not peek because you are also holding back your teammates from getting their peaks but if you're confident of course go for the peaks even if you die don't lose confidence like keep playing with confidence it's just a game the worst case scenario you will die so have confidence try to take gunfights but not too many most of you probably won't believe this but get proper sleep like 7 to 9 hours a day and eat meals and snacks like don't miss them don't dedicate your life to a video game just remember it's just a game like eat food get rest sleep enjoy time with your family it's fine Playing too much can also cause to play even worse than you were playing before. So if you are having a bad day, just switch it off. Play a max of 6 hours a day, not any more than that. If you still want to play more, then watch streamers. If you watch streamers, you will get a lot of game sense on how they play. Then come back a few hours later or the next day and dominate rank. And the most important point of them all, subscribe to my channel, watch my video 10 times over so I can get food to eat. I'm the only child, I need financial support please. Nah, but in all seriousness, the most important point is to have fun. Only if you are having fun on whatever you are doing, only then play this game. If you are not having fun, try to do something else. If you are still not having fun, maybe leave the game. Remember, it's just a game, you can do whatever you like. Don't be toxic to other players, don't let other players be toxic to you and keep enjoying the game. That's basically all I wanted to say in this video. I really hope it helped you out. If it did, you can check out my Minecraft videos in your left and subscribe in the middle.